Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. Today, we are announcing the Skincare Hall of Shame for 2021. Now, don't get me wrong, so much good stuff has happened in the skincare space this year, from some amazing new launches, great skincare brands, and new product discoveries. I captured some of my absolute favourites in my recent awards season that I've been running on the channel, and I'll leave a link to a playlist containing all those videos up there if you do want to check it out. Whilst I'm usually all about the positive vibes here on Mad About Skin, I never think we should shy away from or be ashamed to call out some of the shady and dodgy behaviours in the industry. And that's really what this video is all about. I think as consumers, the more information we have, the better decisions we can make for our own skincare routine. So sit back, relax, and let's award the Skincare Hall of Shame 2021. Now, before we get into this, the usual caveats do apply. These are just my thoughts, feelings, and opinions on these brands, products, and situations. You guys might totally, totally disagree with me, which is absolutely fine. Just add it in the comment section below with any of your own thoughts and feelings. Promise me that whilst you're down there, you'll also give this video a big thumbs up and a like. Whilst I don't personally measure my own success based on the number of likes I get, because that definitely won't be healthy, fortunately YouTube still do, and the more likes a video gets, the more widely YouTube will publish it and push it out to their own audience. I really want to get the message out there about some of these shady goings on in the industry. By giving the video a like, it supports me and the channel in doing that. And honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so, so much. But without further ado, shall we just cut the waffle and delve straight on in? And I want to start with the biggest award of the evening. I say award, but I don't think anyone actually wants to win any of these, and that's for the worst skincare company of 2021. We actually have a joint winner. We've got L'Oreal and Procter and Gamble. Now, L'Oreal actually has its own line of branded skincare, whereas Procter and Gamble doesn't. However, both of these are multinational corporations that own so many of our other small scale indie favorite brands. The reason I'm awarding both of these brands a joint pole position in this category is because they've both been on a little bit of a spending spree in the last 12 to 18 months. Acquiring so many of the smaller scale favourite skincare brands that we know and love and changing their formulations for the worst. The second these big multinational corporations get their hands on some of our favourites, they just can't help themselves. They get their grubby little mitts on them and start tweaking with formulations to minimise the cost and maximise the profit. When it comes to L'Oreal, they've definitely started doing this with CeraVe, which has gone through a wholesale reformulation in the last year. And I'm expecting them to do the same with Youth to the People, which they've recently acquired. When it comes to Procter & Gamble, they definitely did this with First Aid Beauty, which I'm going to come on to a little bit more later on in the video. And also with Pharmacy, which is another recent acquisition by them. Often when these acquisitions happen, they're never to us, the consumer's benefit. And I hope very naively that in 2022, this will slow down. I don't think this is going to be the case. And this is why I think as consumers, we definitely need to keep our radar out there and be aware of when some of these big multinational corporations acquire and buy up some of our favorite skincare brands so we can keep an eye out for tweaks and reformulations, changes to ethics, behaviors and price points because ultimately we always need to be aware of these so we can then change our buying habits appropriately. Both Procter and Gamble and L'Oreal have definitely definitely been guilty of changing some of our favorite brands for the worst this year which is why I'm happy to award them the worst skincare companies jointly for 2021. Now let's move seamlessly. It's kind of like a nice segue on to the biggest fall from grace when it comes to an individual brand and this goes to First Aid Beauty. Now this actually links back to that first category because First Aid Beauty were recently acquired by Procter & Gamble who wasted no time getting on and reformulating some of our favourite favourite products. First Aid Beauty was a ride or die holy grail favourite brand for so many people out there but thanks to wholesale reformulations most people say the products no longer work. They no longer deliver the amazing benefits they were getting from the original products and a lot of people are now just totally turned off from the brand. Also, Procter & Gamble started selling the products into mainland China, which is why they're no longer certified as cruelty-free, which is such a huge retrograde step. And honestly, I think in 2021, we just need to do better, people. And this, I think, was such, such a shame. If you look to Sarah at No BS Beauty, who's one of my favourite content creators here on YouTube, she was one of the original, like, fangirls for First Aid Beauty and loved just about all their product line. She now says none of the products actually work for her anymore and she no longer shops with the brand. This is definitely something you see repeated online and whilst like 12, 18 months ago, First Aid Beauty were getting a lot of hype, a lot of positive comments. Now they barely get mentioned at all and when they do it's usually in a negative way. So this is definitely, definitely awarded the biggest fall from grace in 2021.
Now let's come on to the worst individual product launch of the year. And hands down, this goes to the Inculus Madocasicide Mask. Now I'm not awarding this because it's got a ridiculously long name that's really hard to pronounce. Though, you know what? I wish that brands would just, you know, simplify everything for us content creators. I can't pronounce things ever or remember names. So this one was definitely a tongue twister. But the real reason that it's coming in for the worst individual product launch award is because of the confused marketing versus the ingredients and what the product's actually going to deliver. Let me explain in a bit more detail. So, the Inkly said that this is the perfect mask for people with redness prone skin and sensitivity prone skin. I was super excited when this launched because I really think that sensitive skin market is underrepresented in the skincare world and this could have been a really nice addition. I bought it, I then read the ingredients and was genuinely shocked. Not only are there very few ingredients in this mask that are actually going to dial back redness and sensitivity in a meaningful way, but not just that, it also has some really sensitizing and potentially triggering ingredients in it. The main one I'm going to call out is mint extract, which let's be honest, anyone with sensitive skin knows you don't go anywhere near if you want to keep the skin in equilibrium. I can't understand why a brand would come up with a product designed to calm and soothe the skin and use some of these ingredients. It's just so confusing. And I think it's a real shame, again, because I think there is a gap in the market that this product could be filling. But I think the Inkers need to go back to the drawing board and really think about the formulation beyond just the marketing and actually deliver products that us, the consumer, are going to benefit from. So hopefully we might see a little bit of a tweak and a reformulation in the next year, but I'm not going to hold out too many hopes. And this is definitely, definitely the biggest individual product fail of the year. Now let's come on to failed reformulations. I know a lot of us hate when some of our holy grail favorite brands and products go through a reformulation, but not all of them are for the worst. You know, this year we had the Cetaphil reformulation that whilst they're not a brand I personally reach for, I definitely think the changes they made were for the better and improved their product range. So that's a huge tick in the box. Fortunately, we do also have some reformulation fails. And I think the biggest of the year comes down to the CeraVe reformulation. This again kind of links back to that first category I awarded because they were bought out by L'Oreal, who again got to work on tweaking and changing the reformulations, in my view, to minimize the cost of production and maximize their profit margins. They shouted about some of the things they think people would love, such as removing parabens from all their products. And, you know, that was popular amongst some of the CeraVe fan community. However, they also tweaked a lot of the other ingredients. I really just didn't mention it. In the past 12 months, you've seen a lot of people commenting that CeraVe used to be their number one holy grail brand, but now they get redness, peeling, even burning from using their products, and they couldn't understand why. It's all because of this underhand reformulation that's dialed up the rate of niacinamide in lots of their products, changed around some of the beneficial ingredients to lower their concentrations at the expense of some of the cheaper to formulate with ingredients. This just isn't good. It's shady in the extreme and the fact they didn't really publicize or advertise it left a lot of people wondering whether it was their skin to blame rather than the products because they'd used them successfully for years. I'm here to tell you it's not your skin that's the problem. It's CeraVe as a brand and L'Oreal the parent company that are to blame here and I covered some of the other things going on with this particular brand in a recent video which I'll link up there. Definitely definitely a failed reformulation but I will caveat it to say, you know what, reformulations are all individual and some will work for some people while not working for others. So you know what, sound off on your thoughts, feelings and opinions on the CeraVe reformulation below. Now let's come on to the award for the most failed product launch. And again, I've got two winners in this category. We're going to call out the Trisha Paytas skincare launch and the Reflect by Valkyrie blue light launch. Now both of these failed pretty much from the start. In terms of Trisha Paytas, lots of people said, how can their sunscreen product actually provide any sun protection at all, which is, you know what, you don't mess with sunscreens. I think this is the one thing, you know, skincare should be fun, we should reach for what we want to enjoy, but when it comes to sun protection, really it's non-negotiable. So that was an instant turn off from the start. Lots of people said that the products actually arrived moldy or slightly faulty. They saw some videos of Trisha producing these products and said it was in such unsanitary conditions, it just turned a lot of people off from the start. I don't think we'll be seeing a wholesale restock of this brand and I think it's just going to fade into the abyss over the next 12 months. We also have joint first position here, the Reflect by Valkyrie skincare line. So this was designed to like, you know, protect the skin from blue light from our devices, our laptops, our tablets, our computers. This launched with great fanfare and then they discontinued it literally a week later. I think this is the quickest like fall from grace from a new launch that I've ever, ever heard of. This was rightly called out a lot online for being very misleading in terms of the claims and the marketing that went with the product launches. There was very little scientific data and 
evidence that any of these products were actually going to protect against blue light. And also, there's very little evidence that the blue light emitted from our devices, from our screens, actually damages the skin in any way. So people rightly called this out. I was a little bit confused, because let's be honest, what brand doesn't over-exaggerate their marketing and their claims? So I don't know why this brand specifically was called out for it rather than the others, but I'm glad it was, because I think we need to be doing more of this in the coming years, because I wish that brands would maybe just moderate our expectations a little bit more, be more honest in their marketing, so we kind of know as consumers, truthfully, what we're buying and what results we can expect. This line, like I said, failed before it really began, and it's not going to be brought back or restocked. I think both the Trisha Paytas and the Reflect by Valkyrie Skincare line were both very ill thought through in terms of how they were going to position the products, and they were really just seen as a cash grab, which is an instant turn off for me, and why I'm happy to award both of them the biggest fails in terms of new skincare launches this year. Now, before I draw this video to a close, I want to share my own personal, like, biggest fail when it came to the brands that I previously loved, and that actually comes to Purito. Now, I've talked about CeraVe, First Aid Beauty, and some of the other brands in this video, but I never actually used products from them, so I can't be too disappointed by them because it doesn't really impact me on my own skincare routine. When it came to Purito, I actually loved so many of their products, and I gave them a second chance after the Purito sunscreen scandal because I thought they'd handled that so, so well. However, a lot of things came to light that actually they weren't being truthful or totally honest with us, the consumer. They were telling the Korean authorities and market one thing while telling the Western consumer another thing. And that's just never so duplicitous in the extreme and is never a good thing. I covered my thoughts, feelings, opinions in a recent video, which I'm going to link up there. Definitely worth watching. Whilst a lot of people might continue to shop with Purito and think, actually, that's a bit of a storm in a teacup. All brands are at it. Why would we single out Purito? For me, it was the biggest disappointment because it's the brand that I think fell from grace this year that I used most frequently in my own skincare routine. That one probably hit the hardest. I'll leave you to make your own decisions on the Purito thing, which is why I didn't actually mention them in the main body of this, because I think the other awards I've given have been a bit more categorical, and you can kind of see where they're coming from. With Purito, it's going to be a bit more situated you'll use your own judgment on that. I would, of course, love to know your thoughts, feelings, and opinions on anything mentioned in today's video and any of your own personal fails. So sign up in the comment section below. If you want to recharge those positive vibes, which honestly, I'm all about, promise me you'll check some of my awards videos. My favorite being like the very best drugstore skincare. Affordable, but fantastic. I'll link that video up there. Definitely worth checking out now. Recharge those positive vibes. But I honestly think we need to be aware of some of the things going on in the industry, which is why I make no apologies for film in this style of video. Wherever you are in the world, guys, stay safe, stay well, and love your skin. Take care. Bye.